A lot of people can't say that. A commandment with promise, but very few people keep it. Honor thy mother and father that thy days may be long upon the earth. He did that. Today there's such disrespect for parents. I'm telling you, that's a remarkable thing. But still, Jesus said, lackest thou one thing. So it's possible to live a good life and not be saved. Are you ready for this? It's possible to die in the presence of the Lord and not be saved. Well, preacher, where do you get that from? Jesus was crucified and there were two thieves we know of, one on the right end, one on the left. Malefactors was there and one of them, the only thing he was concerned about was getting his life spared. He said, if you're the Christ, save thyself and us. He wasn't talking about salvation from sin. He was talking about getting out of his circumstance. I want off this cross. I don't want to die like this. But the other one rebuked him and said, does not thou fear God, seeing thou in the same condemnation? And this man, pointing to Jesus, this man hath done nothing amiss but we receive the due reward for our deed. He said we deserve to die. They are dying in the presence of Jesus. One man had sense enough to say, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. The other man didn't say that. He died in the presence of Jesus, but the one that recognized him as Lord and Savior and knew he was going to a place called paradise, Jesus said, I say unto the that today shalt thou be with me in paradise. But what about the other one? He died lost in the very presence of Jesus. I'm glad your mom and dad, your grandma and grandpa, your loved ones knew the power of God. I'm glad you're in a church that experiences the presence of Christ, but to sit in the middle of the presence of Jesus and still not know him as your savior makes you lost. And then those words. Why was he lost? He talked to Jesus. He lived a good life, but he went away from Jesus when he met him. What you do with Jesus is the deciding factor as to where you will be when you die. He went away. Why? Well, we know he had great possessions. It may have been fear. The fear after the Lord told him, Go sell all that thou hast and give to the poor. Now listen, people said, see, you can buy your way into heaven. That's not what Jesus was teaching at all. He knew that his weakness was love for money. And he knew he loved the money more than he loved the master. And he's saying, you've got to love me more than your possessions. He knew that the possessions had this man. Please hear what I'm saying. It's not wrong to have possessions, but it is wrong for possessions to have you. The possessions was controlling his life. The possessions were dictating what he was to do and the direction he was to go. And had that fear of if I give it all away, how will I make it? Maybe it was procrastination. Well, I'll do it, but I'll do it later. I'll go and I'll make a way of living and a way of life and then at the end of life, then I'll give my life to the Lord. I hate what the devil does. When you're young, he tells you, if you get saved, you're not going to have any fun and life will be miserable and life will be dreary. You need to go out. You need to enjoy life. You need to party, you need to have a big time and then when you get old, come to Jesus. I watch it happen all the time. Then when people get older, they wanna come to the Lord and you know what the devil, the same devil tells them then, oh, you've waited too late now. (laughs) You've gone too long. Do you see how he deceives us? Do you see what he does? He wants you tonight 
not to, not to leave this place saying, I don't want anything to do with Jesus. He just wants you to go away from Jesus. And if he can get you to go away from Jesus and say in your mind, I feel pretty good about it because maybe later on I'll be saved. But what if this is your last chance? What if this is the last sermon I ever preached? What if this is the last worship service I'm ever in? What if this is the last opportunity for you that are lost to surrender your life to Christ? What if you're living your last hours of life right now? There's doorways on both sides of this building. You'll exit through one side or the other out these doorways. What if you step through the threshold of one of these doors never to come back again? Never to hear another song? Never to hear another testimony? Never to hear another sermon? And never, never to be in the presence of another altar call? What if this is it? You've got a decision to make. Like it or not. You say, Well, I'm not rejecting the Lord. To not accept Him is to reject Him. To refuse to say yes is to say no. You are making up your mind by turning him away and going away without him. I don't know what you're choosing to do, but I'm planning on when I go through that threshold, Jesus is going with me tonight. He'll go with me always, the Bible says, even to the end of the world, the last step of the journey, he'll still be there. When I walk through the valley where the waters moan at the soul's last struggle, he'll still be there. When I stand before the golden hills of heaven, he'll still be there. He is with me. I'm not going my way without him. Amen. So where did he go? When he left here, where did he go? He go back to a religion that had left him empty. It had to or he wouldn't have been seeking Jesus. He sure would have been running to the Lord if his religion had satisfied him. A lot of religious people are as unsatisfied as can be. Religious but lost. Where did he go to? Did he go to his friends? It's great to have friends but Jesus is the friend that'll stick closer than a brother. Did he go to the pleasures that he could have bought with all those possessions? But what will that satisfy him when death calls and everything that he had, he was going to leave it all behind anyway? Job said, naked, I came from my mother's womb and naked, I shall return thither. You know what that means? You didn't come with anything and you're not leaving with anything. But I've got good news. You can leave with someone. And his name is Jesus. And that's why tonight you need to say, I'm not gonna leave this place and say almost, almost. I close with this. Many years ago, I hadn't been preaching very many years at all and I went to hold a revival meeting at a little country church up in Lawrence County, Ohio. And I preached that night and there was a man in the service that for some reason the Holy Spirit just locked my eyes on him like radar. 